All right, hello everybody. This is the Kubernetes SIG Architecture Production Readiness Subproject Meeting for March 24th, 2021. Um, uh, let's get started. So um, I see we have uh, Elena and David each put an item on the agenda, but I wanted to stick AI review on the agenda. Um, we all had some action items, or several of us did anyway. And I will say that I have not done mine yet. Um, let's see, that's, where's, where's mine? Uh, um, yeah, that shouldn't be too hard to do, but I haven't done it. Um, urgent, there's not a lot of urgency since we're not, you know, but it's gonna come up soon now, or past code freeze, we're coming up, you know, before too long, it'll happen that we're planning the next release and we're getting into where people are going to start writing PR, PR, or uh, filling out the PRR section. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. I haven't made any progress on my action items. Uh, I have been kind of up to my ears in test freeze stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I have two, I think, assigned to me. One is to possibly have the bot add assignments based on the PRR request file reviewers uh if that's possible to do and the other is uh i think changing the order of the questions in the template which i should probably do first uh because by having the sli question before the slo question people are like here are some metrics and now i will invent slos when it should be <laughs> the other way around okay um, i also need to update the template uh in a different spot though so hopefully we won't all conflict and i thought about the phrasing but did not actually open a pr which is almost as good as not having done it at all awesome equivalent for the end viewer uh but yeah uh, i'm hoping that i'll get a chance to at least finish okay. the uh the, the template rejigger should be fast so hopefully by the end of the week if i can remember okay Uh, um, uh, when should I do mine? Uh, my next meeting. It like, shouldn't take very long, but I'll just be realistic. Uh, so, Dave. Uh, uh, Alana, I will nag you uh, later this week, and you can nag me later this week, and uh, hopefully that will help us both. Accountability pact. I'm in, buddy. <laughs> okay, cool. So you're by end of week two, David. Okay. Um, well, that was easy. I don't think Wojtek has any action on him. Somehow he managed to avoid that, but he's got enough to do. Um, okay, so then, Elena, uh, you had wanted to discuss this. Sorry, I'm failing to find my mute button. Yeah, so one of the things that's come up uh, a lot is that we have a lot of people who, so there's like currently standard is four weeks for enhancements freeze. And we have a lot of people who for the first two weeks before enhancements freeze, uh, as a chair, I am like, please get your stuff done. Please work on your enhancements. Please get them ready for review and nothing happens. And then once we're two weeks out from the deadline, people are like, okay, fine, I'm working on it. Um, and I think that this is not just, uh, like, at least from my sort of informal polls with chairs and whatnot. Um, it's, I, this is not just me experiencing this, it sounds like. This is pretty common. People are very deadline driven. And so uh, one thing that I was floating around is making a suggestion to the next uh, release team to please put uh, enhancements freeze earlier in the cycle. So my suggestion would be week two instead of week four, uh, because we're not really getting anything done, which means that we've got, you know, like that many fewer weeks to actually uh, get code written because things don't tend to get fully approved until the enhancements freeze deadline, uh, at least in my experience. So um, lots of chairs seemed like excited about this, but one concern is that it reduces the amount of time that we would have to do PRR review. So I wanted to make sure that I raised this here before I went and uh, like talked to the release team. I wanted to get everybody else's feedback my vague feeling and the data seems to suggest 
not really much happens during the first two weeks of the cycle. So I don't think it will make it worse for us, but I don't want to assume, so. I, I share your opinion. I don't think it will make it. I think that, like you said, it all happens in the last week or two. And whether that's here or two weeks earlier, as long as it's the same cadence and I have enough foreknowledge of it, I'll make my schedule accordingly. I have. Uh, you're breaking up, David. I'm going to mute in case it's me interfering. I think we lost him. Yeah, I think so. To wait oh. okay. till can you, David, David, can yep. you start over? We we missed most of what you said. It was all locked up. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so I have a reservation not related to PRR. So we have a lot of SIG that have a two week meeting cadence, and while it's important to discuss all or discuss many of the enhancements at those meetings ahead of time um there are cases where like you want to have a meeting to remind people that you're almost there and then maybe one to discuss some outlying issues uh and a two-week cycle wouldn't give us time to do that do that after we ship so i get my, I guess the question my alone in that concern I, I hear what you're saying. The question for me would be how soon the schedule gets published. You know, like you can start doing those reminders before the, the, the release cycle begins. I mean, usually it's not like, it, it, in, my, in my recollection, it's not like, oh, we ship 1.21 on this date and and that starts week one i mean usually they don't even have the schedule together yet or at least last time they didn't maybe that that's maybe i'm i'm just recency bias here um i would I, love I, to move away from like the nag driven development that we have in kubernetes right now and like from what i have experienced uh in sigs with both weekly and bi-weekly meetings Nobody seems to listen at the first announcement and the first bi-weekly meeting anyways. It's only really, uh, oh darn it, uh, we forgot uh, in the like the sort of second final reminder. So like, I mean, emails are going out to KDEV and I think to most of the like SIG lists, I don't know necessarily that like, I mean, the, the meetings are really good times to go over to kept review and make sure that everything is kind of aligned. And like, there's maybe an argument that, you know, um, it might, it like having a four week window ensures that if SIGs have bi-weekly meetings that uh, they can meet twice before CAPs are over, but, or sorry, before the CAP deadline comes in. But uh, I am vaguely under the understanding right now that like, I think we're changing the requirements uh, such that SIGs only have to meet like once every three weeks or four weeks. So if that happens, then, uh, you know, like people could potentially completely missed this window. And I think it's kind of on SIGs to make sure that their meetings are aligned with the release cycle. So. So I think, I think I, what, what I'm gonna say is David, I think it's a valid point. And but this group's not the one to really make the point with, like for, if you're not concerned about production readiness, let's let's just assume that for, the, for this group's point of view, we're agnostic unless Wojtek is, as a concern and then probably bring that up to the release team in that discussion because we're not going to make a decision here right with with regard to that so i agree yeah so i i think from my perspective like uh, from purely like prr perspective i i i don't have any strong opinion i think that i'm not sure i fully buy the argument that like um i mean i fully agree that people are doing everything on the last minute but like, it's not that like, as soon as the caps are approved, they start working on the implementation and they, they like, they don't manage to do that on time because like the, the, the coding part of the release cycle is too short. It's just, they like go sleeping after the caps are approved and they wake up again, like week, week before code freeze. And then they start doing like everything. So, um, yeah. 
I think that's fair, uh, but like I'm on upstream now full time and I found four weeks to be too short to get everything done in the release that I needed to get done. Like structured logging, we had that like started from the get go and like we ended up spilling like a week into test freeze. Uh, and I mean, to be fair, that was a very large thing with a ton of coordination that was required. Uh, but like, I also had uh, another cap that I was doing like actual code implementation changes for uh, that like, I was so busy dealing with bugs in the first half of the cycle that like, you know, like it would be nice to be able to spend two weeks crunching bugs and then like work on my feature in the next week and then have more than like two weeks to get it in or that's the cutoff. Uh, that was the thing that I was personally running into, which kind of sucked. Uh, and like, I'm on this whole time upstream for people who are not like not having the flexibility there, I think is you know, potentially a concern. And I mean, obviously people are like, oh, but like you could always get your cap approved earlier. The issue is I have not like in practice seen people getting the caps approved earlier than the enhancements freeze. I think, I think it happens. Happen. I think it happens. I think most, the cap, most of the caps that I was driving was, was approved somewhere in the middle or like towards the end of the release cycle. And that was preparation for the next release. So I think um, it depends on like, um, when exactly you come up with the idea and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. API machinery ended up in the case where we knew about three weeks in advance what it was we were going to put into the release. Uh, and from there, it was just making sure the paperwork got done. Yeah, well, so we had the same thing in Node where like we started planning like a month, I think, before the enhancements freeze. But like in terms of the enhancements actually merging, getting PRR review and going implementable, that did not happen until uh, like the enhancements freeze. Right. So that, but, but was that because nothing was happening on them or is it because there were decisions and discussions and things that had to be made that having only two weeks might make more difficult. Uh, that, 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 but before you answer that, the other, I wanted to make another point, which I, I, uh, I jumped. Like the specific dates, I mean, all of this work can be ongoing anyway, right? People might be working on a draft of a cat for a couple of weeks before they even put a PR out there. So, so just because we're not seeing PRs doesn't mean work's not happening. So we also have to think about that, that if we shorten that time period, um, that could affect that. Although we also could say that you could be working on your caps for the next release right now. And, you know, and, and probably people and should be. I am. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. Um, so I'm sorry, I, I do just want to table this because it's an interesting discussion, but we're not really the decision making group for this particular thing here. Um, and and. So we're just going to end up repeating all of these arguments at the release team meeting if when you bring this up there. So I, I think that um, I personally, and from a PRR point of view, none of us, I think, object to what you're saying. Um, happy to have a discussion offline on on this, but I know we have time, but I just, I don't like to have, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm being pedantic yeah, this, about the meeting. This has been discussed at chairs as well. So I think that's totally fine. Yeah. Happy to bring it up there. Sounds like PRR okay. will not be the blocker on this. So great. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Then David, you have an agenda item here. Um, I do. Uh, so I remember way back when trying to build out the list of how do we know we're being affected? And yes. uh, this was the first release where we were actually gating. And I want to make sure that we uh, have thought ahead enough to collect numbers from 120 uh, to be able to compare against 121 um, to figure out whether we were as successful as we hoped. Um, I have not attempted to do that, and I wasn't sure if anyone else had. I have not. Now, what, what we, we, we ran now a year ago-ish, we ran, when we first started, we ran that survey, and I think we found there's some things we could improve in the way we ask questions. Um, but we may wanna, what, what I had intended to do was run that survey periodically, 
at least twice a year or something. Um, but we haven't. So we probably should do that soon, uh, tweak it, have better questions. Like there was some, there was some data missing in when we went to do the analysis, like which specific versions did you roll back? We didn't really have that, if I recall correctly. But yeah. we should probably tweak that, send that out again, so that we start collecting the data on current releases. But the reality is like 120 is still not out there in most of the cloud providers, or at least if it is, it's not like like for GKE. At least it's only in our rapid channel, um, with you know which we don't recommend for production. So, um, you know, I will point out that some vendors have shipped 120 and can ask number ask for numbers about it. But I agree that getting something out now, we'll be able to gather data for the last three releases fairly easily. Right. I think we should go ahead and do that. Uh, so that we have some sort of closer baseline uh, for comparison. Okay, I will take that action. Um, why is my keyboard not working? There we go. Okay. And Alana, since you've joined since we did this, um, would love it if you have other ideas for how we can get this data about effectiveness of production readiness review. Um, we had quite a bit of discussion on it when we first started up the program, and it's really pretty hard to measure um, because a lot of the information about failures and things like that aren't necessarily going to be shared aren't necessarily easy to gather, even if they are, even if people were willing to share them. So um, we, we did a survey way back when and learned some things um, and, and we'd like, you know, we'll do it, we'll do another survey um, now and try and learn some things, but, you know, so we have some signal, but, you know, with 80, 80 or so respondents last time, it's not a super strong signal, um, but it's something. I will point out, I mean, we did gather useful data from that, right? Like we found Definitely. people do rely on beta APIs. Beta APIs do not work very well, uh, or often do not People work. enable alpha in production, uh, ter terrifying amount. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that did lead to things like the no perma beta cap, right? Um, so, yeah. so we did learn some useful things. I do think we can do a better job this time, uh, but I want to make sure we gather the, that information before we have our first release where we should see some impact. Yeah. Yeah. What I'll do is um, I plan to send updated survey questions for review um, before next meeting. Wow, that is some bad typing. Um, send out survey after next meeting. Sound reasonable? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. Awesome. All right. I think that's it's high time we did that. Um, okay. Anything else, folks, or shall we call it a day? That's all from me. Okay, thank you all. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Let's get our items done before then, and uh, we'll be we'll be getting ourselves ready for the next the next go around. That's right. See you then. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.